Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Zephyrs. It is Mrs. Lewis, your middle school librarian, uh, coming at you live from my office, which, believe it or not, is also my laundry room. <laughs> so I know that we're all adapting in a lot of unique ways, right, to this very uh, unique situation. So, um, you know, there's been a little bit of an extension on the time that we are going to be out. Um, and so Mrs. Lewis has been hard at work trying to make some really fun activities uh, for you, as well as um, coming up with some different books to talk about. Um, I'm really tearing apart my shelves trying to find some good stuff for you guys. Um, so first I want to check in and see how are you doing? How are you holding up? I think we're on uh, what, today is Monday the 30th, right? You haven't been at school in almost three weeks. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. So I hope that you're being safe and washing your hands and hopefully socially distancing. Okay. I know it's really, really rough staying at home all the time. Um, you know, my, my husband and I started taking the kids for a drive, uh, every couple days. So um, on the days when we don't get to pick up the lunches in our school district, uh, we usually will take the kids around that time for a drive. And so sometimes it's just like around our town um, and we'll play, my son's in kindergarten. So sometimes we play like the alphabet game where he has to point out um, signs that have a specific letter in them. Uh, or we'll do like a color game where he has to find something that's a certain color on our drive. So um, you know, I hope that you are able to kind of stay occupied and find things like that to keep you going. Um, we have started playing lots of board games. So we introduced my son to Guess Who and oh gosh, what's the other one? Connect Four. That's it. Connect Four. Uh, my daughter, two, two years old, loves Connect Four. She's not very good at it, <laughs> but she just thinks it's fun to drop the little the little uh, coin thing down the thing and it makes that noise and she goes, ah, ha, ha. so um, hopefully you are finding small things to take joy in like my daughter is. Um, <clears throat> so as always, you know, feel free to reach out to me. You can send me an email or if you're in my Google classroom, you can send me a message on Google classroom. Um, if you would like more specific book recommendations, you are welcome to ask and I will happily give them to you. Um, okay, so let's start by talking about this book. I will warn you that it's definitely on the more um, young adult side, I would say. Uh, it's something that actually does tie pretty closely to the eighth grade English curriculum. So you may not have gotten to read Anne Frank yet in eighth grade. Um, and really, I mean, supplies to anybody if you're going to read the diary of Anne Frank. Um, that is a seminal work. And what seminal means is that it's a very important work. It's very well known. Um, and, you know, it's it's written in diary format from the point of view of a young girl, Anne Frank, when she is about middle school age, 14-ish. And, um, you know, she's she and her family are hiding in a secret compartment inside an apartment. Um, they're hiding from the Nazis because they're Jewish and it's the Holocaust and um, they don't want to be rounded up and taken to any of the concentration camps. So that book ties very closely to the book that I'm going to talk about today. Um, the book I'm going to talk about today is based on a, a true story. Um, it's also written in a diary format, but it actually is written by a class of students. And so um, this book was for me one of the books that showed me that I really wanted to be a teacher and it showed me what kind of um, changes and positive impacts a teacher can have on a student's life. So for me it has a lot of meaning because I, I it was very important to me in, in helping me see that I really wanted to be a teacher. It's one of the reasons I love working at Whitehall. And um, but I think as a student, I think that you would really relate to some of the things that the students are going through. It takes place in Los Angeles in the early 90s. There are riots happening, um, race riots, and it's a very dangerous time to be in a very like inner city kind of school district. And so this teacher um, ends up 
getting this class. She's a first year teacher. She gets this freshman English class and it's rough. They don't get along at all, but she, um, something happens, which I don't want to spoil for you because I'm probably going to read it. It's on the first couple pages. Uh, something happens. And when she says, this is what Hitler did with Nazi propaganda in the Holocaust. And the kids all look at her like she's crazy. One, one person knew what the Holocaust was. And so that starts this journey of exploring social justice and exploring, you know, what, what is this historical event and how does it relate to and impact what we're going through right now? And so um, she and her students ended up keeping journals and their journals, they ended up compiling into this book. And this book is called, whoop, there we go. Um, there we go. Okay. It's called The Freedom Writer's Diary. So it's written by the Freedom Writers. Those are her students. That's the name they came up with. And Erin Gruwell. She was the teacher. And so they, um, they, they addressed a lot of different social justice issues. They talked about the Holocaust. They talked about the civil rights movement. Um, part of why they um, called themselves the Freedom Writers was they learned about the Freedom Rides, which if you have never learned about the Freedom Rides, feel free to uh, to do a Google search. Um, we have uh, several novels. We have some graphic novels, uh, such as the March series, um, in the library that are about that. And it's very important social justice issues, and it's something to remember about when you are a a citizen of a country is that you you know you have to think about what's good for you, not just for you, but what's going to be good for for everybody, so that we can all contribute and make and make this a great place. So. Um, I, I really, really love this book and it tells the story of their freshman year. Actually, I think the book, the book actually spreads all the way out to senior year. So they kind of pick and choose a couple different, um, you know, entries from that time period. There is a movie that it's based on, um, or a movie that's based on it rather. Um, but they only follow them, I think up through sophomore year, she gets, it's a very unique situation. She ends up convincing her administration, her and these students need to stay together for all four years instead of new teacher every year. Um, and, and it makes a really special circumstance for them. So I am going to read the Freedom Writer's Diary for you. We do have it in the library. So when we get back, when we get back, uh, you can borrow it there, but it is also on Sora and it's available right now. It says borrow. I checked. So hustle on over there and check out the Freedom Writer's Diary. <clears throat> There's a forward. Okay. Freshman year, fall, 1994. Entry one, Ms. Gruel. Dear Diary, tomorrow morning, my journey as an English teacher officially begins. Since first impressions are so important, I wonder what my students will think about me. Will they think I'm out of touch or too preppy? Worse yet, that I'm too young to be taken seriously. Maybe I'll have them write a journal entry describing what their expectations are of me and the class. Even though I spent last year as a student teacher at Wilson High School, I'm still learning my way around the city. Long Beach is so different than the gated community I grew up in. Thanks to MTV dubbing Long Beach as the gangsta rap capital with its depiction of guns and graffiti, my friends have a warped perception of the city, or LBC, as the rappers refer to it. They think I should wear a bulletproof vest rather than pearls. Where I live in Newport Beach is a utopia compared to some of the neighborhoods seen in a Snoop Doggy Dog video. Still, TV tends to blow things out of proportion. The school is actually located in a safe neighborhood just a few miles from the ocean. Its location and reputation make it desirable. So much so that a lot of the students that live in what they call the hood take two or three buses just to get to school every day. Students come in from every corner of the city. Rich kids from the shore sit next to poor kids from the projects. There's every race, religion, and culture within the confines of the quad. But since the Rodney King riots, racial tension has spilled over into the school. Due to busing and an outbreak in gang activity, Wilson's traditional white upper-class demographics have changed radically. African Americans, Latinos, and Asians now make up the majority of the student body. As a student teacher last year, I was pretty naive. I wanted to see past color and culture, but I was immediately confronted by it when the first bell rang and a student named Sherrod sauntered in, bouncing a basketball. 
He was a junior, a disciplinary transfer from Wilson's crosstown rival, and his reputation preceded him. Word was that he had threatened his previous English teacher with a gun, which I later found out was only a plastic water gun, but it had all the markings of a dramatic showdown. In those first few minutes, he made it brutally clear that he hated Wilson. He hated English, and he hated me. His sole purpose was to make his preppy student teacher cry. Little did he know that within a month, he'd be the one crying. Sherud became the butt of a bad joke. A classmate got tired of Sherud's antics and drew a racial caricature of him with huge, exaggerated lips. As the drawing made its way around the class, the other students laughed hysterically. When Sherud saw it, he looked as if he was going to cry. For the first time, his tough facade began to break. When I got a hold of the picture, I went ballistic. This is the type of propaganda that the Nazis used during the Holocaust, I yelled, when a student timidly asked me, what's the Holocaust? I was shocked. I asked, how many of you have heard of the Holocaust? Not a single person raised his hand. Then I asked, how many of you have been shot at? Nearly every hand went up. I immediately decided to throw out my meticulously planned lessons and make tolerance the core of my curriculum. From that moment on, I would try to bring history to life by using new books, inviting guest speakers, and going on field trips. Since I was just a student teacher, I had no budget for my schemes. So I moonlighted as a concierge at the Marriott Hotel and sold lingerie at Nordstrom's. My dad even asked me, why can't you just be a normal teacher? Actually, normalcy didn't seem so bad after my first snafu. I took my students to see Schindler's List in Newport Beach at a predominantly white upper-class theater. I was shocked to see women grab their pearls and clutch their purses in fear. A local paper ran a front page article about the incident, describing how poorly my students were treated, after which I received death threats. One of my disgruntled neighbors had the audacity to say, if you love black people so much, why don't you just marry a monkey? All this drama, and I didn't even have my teaching credentials yet. Luckily, some of my professors from the University of California, Irvine, read the article and invited my class to a seminar by the author of Schindler's List, Thomas Kennelly. Kennelly was so impressed by my students that a few days later, we got an invitation, my daughter's awake, <laughs> to meet Steven Spielberg at Universal Studios. I couldn't believe it. The famous director wanted to meet the class that I had dubbed as colorful as a box of Crayola crayons and their rookie teacher who was causing waves. He marveled at how far these unteachable students had come as a junior class and what a close group they had become. He even asked Sherud what we were planning to do next year as an encore. After all, if a film does well, you make a sequel. If a class surpasses everyone's expectations, you dismantle it. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Upon my return from Universal, the head of the English department told me, you're making us look bad. Talk about bursting my bubble. How was I making them look bad? After all, these were the same kids that wouldn't last a month or were too stupid to read advanced placement books. She went on to say, things are based on seniority around here. So in other words, I was lucky to have a job and keeping Sherud and his posse another year would be pushing the envelope. Instead, I'd be teaching freshmen, at-risk freshmen. Hmm, not exactly the assignment I was hoping for. So starting tomorrow, it's back to the drawing board. But I'm convinced that if Sherud could change, then anyone can. So basically... I should prepare myself for a room full of Sherud's. If it took a month to win Sherud over, I wonder how long it's going to take a bunch of feisty 14-year-olds to come around. Freedom Writer's Note. Each teenager played an integral role in developing the diary entries, reading, editing, and encouraging one another. To protect their anonymity and illustrate the universality of their experiences, we decided to number each diary entry rather than attach a name. The students have shared their life experiences freely without inhibition. I'm going to stop there. Okay. Um, because now we start with the actual diary entries of the students. So I really hope that you decide to pick up this book. It is a book that's probably going to make you cry um, or at least feel things. Right. And um, but that's what books do right? They tend to make us feel things. Um, they help us deal with feelings that maybe are too complicated and big for us to recognize right now. And that's one of the reasons I love books. So if you have questions, again, send me an email, lewisn at whitehallcopy.org. Um, go look up the Freedom Writers Diary on Sora. Otherwise, be safe, wash your hands, go outside, get some vitamin D. Um, and as always, stay Zephyr, Zephyr Tough. Zephyr Tough. Zephyr Tough. Zephyr Tough. That's it. Zephyr Tough.